people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep shadow, on them a light has shined. Almighty God, grant that the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, may so light our whole lives that we need never again walk in darkness.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nation might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ears have perceived, no eyes has seen any God beside you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourselves, we transgressed. When we have all become like one who is unclean and all righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf and in our iniquities, we like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold for you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us from the hand of your iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thank you. 
A reading from 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. If you are going to Children's Word, you can follow Mr. Steve down to the Undercroft. Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the son of man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. It's true. One day the world will end. The entire solar system will end. The sun will ultimately go extinct. And that will be it for this corner of the universe. But let me cut to the chase. Time will not end ever nor will light. So keep that in mind. You know, when you begin a story, you gotta set the stage. All good stories do that. And to start Advent with this horror movie trailer of a prophecy about the end of time, just kinda doesn't go with the baby Jesus and the, you know, it doesn't feel like peace, goodwill towards men and the like. It does make sense to learn about the context of Jesus' birth in terms of what was happening on earth when God sent him. But to start the Advent adventure with Jesus' apocalyptic prophecy about what would happen before his second coming feels a little bit cart before the horse. It's kind of like a Hollywood movie that starts in the future and then gets down to business with a long flashback, which is most of the movie. Now, what Jesus was talking about in that prophecy was pretty unsavory. Fortunately, the people who put together these lectionary readings for Advent start the text in Mark after the most gruesome part but to understand what Jesus meant by saying, in those days after that suffering, you gotta kinda know what he meant by after that suffering, because there's never been a shortage of suffering. And so if you're curious, you're gonna wanna know what suffering Jesus was talking about. And so I'm going to tell you, but first let me 
set the stage a little bit more precisely for the telling of this prophecy. Jesus had been sitting with the disciples on the Mount of Olives. It was only a couple of days before his betrayal and crucifixion in Jerusalem. And he was talking about how the temple would one day not be standing. And so the disciples were asking him, well, what are the signs? How are we gonna know when this is coming so we can get ready? The response he gave them was rather sobering. And I want you to know what it is. I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but I want you to at least know the juicy bits. Jesus said to them, watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claiming I am he and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Meaning wars don't mean that the end is near. There will be earthquakes in various places, nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and famine. These are the beginnings of birth pains. Now the little sidebar, when the way we take care of one another is not so much, something changes, the system shifts. You must be on your guard. You, meaning the disciples, will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Whenever you're arrested, not if you're arrested, whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given to you at the time, for it is not you speaking, it is the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you see the abomination that causes desolation standing where it does not belong, understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop go down or enter the house to take anything out. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that this will not take place in winter, because those will be days of distress unequaled from the beginning when God created the world until now and never to be equaled again. You get the gist? I'm not going to read on and on. This is... This is the nature of the 13th chapter of Mark. Jesus' final words to the disciples upon delivering this prophecy was, so be on your guard. I've told you everything ahead of time. And then he went on to the part that you heard today. Now, after hearing this rosy picture of what it means to be a Jesus follower, one might wonder why anyone would be a Christian why they're not all lining up to run to the baptismal font. And maybe that's because we don't understand the seriousness of committing ourselves to this alternative way of being in the world where violence is forbidden. Those were the days before Jesus' second coming to which he referred. So why do you think we're talking about that on this long-awaited first day of Advent when we're eager to hear about the first incarnation? Well, to cut to the chase there, because that wasn't the first incarnation. It was the first time that Christ was incarnate in a baby. And when we see Christ in human flesh again is a time we don't know, but Christ, the cosmic Christ, has always been before time began. 
So that must mean that there's some stuff we don't understand about time and some stuff we don't understand about the light, the mystical cosmic Christ. There was no first, no second, no pause in the presence of Christ. But there have been windows in time that can open and close that give the humans an opportunity to see the eternal nature of Christ. So we don't forget that part while we tell the story of the human incarnation of the Christ, Jesus. It's far easier to understand Jesus, the Messiah, entering the world as a baby full of potential, teaching completely new and awesome things than it is to grasp the mystical and more abstract Christ that John talks about. I think apocalyptic prophecies are not about the end of time at all, but about the end of a particular time, the end of a chapter in the evolution of humankind. The prophecies are the signs that the God who exists outside of time is about to do something new. In just a very few weeks, the time will go by quickly. We're going to turn to the Gospel of John and read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind, the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. But that doesn't mean that sometimes we're not wandering in the dark. The light and that life that is Christ was there at the beginning before time because, here comes the physics, light does not need time. Light does not experience time at all. Light is timeless, both to physics and to theology. I don't get it. We don't need to get it. We just need to know that. Light is timeless. The light of Christ is timeless. So it cannot ever end. But we need time to see Christ this side of the veil. And while our souls are timeless, our mortal existence isn't. And when we feel mortal in chaotic and dangerous times, we start to think about our own end. And I wonder if we don't kind of conflate our own end with the end of everything. We begin Advent with Jesus' prophecy of the end of a chapter because Jesus himself was the beginning of a new chapter for all humankind a chapter that unleashed the potential for no one to ever feel marginalized or unloved. Are we there yet? Even though Jesus' apocalyptic painting sounds pretty scary, the prophecy ends with a reassurance that the Son of Man will come again one day in the clouds with great power and glory. And the reason why Jesus needed to say that was because he didn't want the disciples to give up and think that the Jesus chapter was over, even if he were to be killed, because he knew it was coming. He was teaching them to have hope that it was not ever going to be over. And for us to know about Jesus today depended upon those disciples holding on to that hope, even unto death. Jesus was born into a time of trial. Things were tough in first century Nazareth. Brutal Roman occupation and soul-sucking taxation. Sounds like a campaign ad, doesn't it? It was not a peaceful place at the time of Jesus' birth. And peace has eluded it still, as you well know. So think about the gift of a teaching that says, you have no enemies. There are no strangers. There are only neighbors. 
We are all God's people. And until we all believe it and live it, there will never be peace. Jesus lived that and taught that. And it took thousands of years of evolution to get to at least that point where a few people, the disciples, would be ready to hear that message from Jesus. Humans are, you know, we have our own time constant to learn. How many more years will it take for us to live that message? Time does not end and neither does the light of Christ. The hope of Advent lies in the possibility that one day we will put down our weapons and our words, putting on the armor of light and commit to being the people that God unshakably believes we can be. Amen. Let's affirm our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found in your service bulletin. Please let us stand and face each other across the aisle. Friends, in Christ, what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Let us appeal to God saying, show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Restore your holy Catholic Church, O Lord God of hosts. Give us eyes to see that together we are not lacking any spiritual gift Strengthen us that we may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Show the light of your countenance. Restore justice throughout the world, O Lord God of hosts. You work for those who wait for you. Come to the help of the oppressed and the needy. Show the light of your countenance. Restore your creation, O Lord God of hosts. Awesome are your deeds and wonderful are the works of your hands. We give thanks for all our blessings, remembering today the birthdays of Stephanie Brooks Wiggins 
and Tom Culver. Show the light of your countenance. Restore peace in the city, O Lord of God of hosts. Make us mindful of our interdependence. Help us to respect the dignity of our neighbors. Show the light of your countenance. And we Restore the weak to strength, O Lord God of hosts. Come quickly with healing in your wings. We remember today Lucy Marshall, Vince Massiglia, Shirley Nathan Pullian, Tijan Cox and family, Zach, Dana, and Zoe Shavashevsky, Mary Lou Frelick, Debbie McClellan, Bryce Casper, Eleanor Holland, Helen Langer, Brian, Charles Tucker, Mary Warfield, Pat Shelton, Dawn Wagner, Nancy Wagner, Irene Hardy, Kieran Haney, Larry Brown, Sandra De Silva, Stephanie Brooks Wiggins, Mary Lou Frelick, Janet Churchill, Lillian Thomas, Michelle Haney Madison, Barbara Hoy, Mercedes Hill, Bill Wacker, Debbie Wacker, Mary Locke Stanley, Becky Slater, Presiding Bishop Michael Curry, 40 West Assistance and Referral Center clients, and any others we name at this time. David Joseph, Terry Gilliam, Gillian. Show the light of your countenance. Restore our hope, O Lord God of hosts. Though we all fade like a leaf, still you are faithful. You have called your people into the fellowship of your son forever. Show the light of your countenance. These are our prayers. Receive them in your mercy and grant us, O Lord, your peace, your peace that passes our human understanding. Amen. Kneeling or standing, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Zoom friends, peace to you first. And to the rest of us, the peace of God be always with you. Peace, everyone. Thank you all. Peace, everyone on the Zoom and everyone in church. Peace. 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 Peace, everyone. <laughs> That's my show. Peace. 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 Oops.
sound is weird. Morning, Yum, yum. Can we return to our pews now? Thank you. It's time to return to the pews. Yeah, good luck with that. All right, enough of feeling peaceful. Let's all feel anxious and have some announcements. No, not, not seriously, the anxiety part. First of all, please come to coffee hour after uh, the service. Uh, we still need people to pick names off of the angel tree to provide gifts. I did not go into the parish house during the nine o'clock coffee hour, so I don't know what the latest number is, but as of yesterday, it was what, 16? 18. So I'm hoping that people heeded the call at 8 o'clock and have taken ornaments off the tree. So please take a look at that angel tree. Also, Glorious has bingo tickets available for the 40 West fundraiser. So be sure and see Glorious at coffee hour because 40 West is awesome and we need to support it early and always. Thank you for that. Tuesday evening, we will be having an Advent activity. It's Advent Supper Church hybrid, both in the parish house and on Zoom beginning at 6.30 p.m. We're going to be doing the Holy Communion in a somewhat different way. The whole supper is going to be Holy Communion and we'll wind those two things around each other like a braid. And then we will break into small groups to have some discussion about the war that is raging in the Middle East. Structured discussion with specific questions and facilitators. The small groups will be at tables in person in the parish hall and will be on Zoom led by Thelma Smullen for the people who are attending by Zoom. I hope you will join us for uh, this first, and I think this will be the Advent activity aside from our Sunday worships. So please do come. If you are coming on Zoom, make sure you bring your meal to the table where the phone or the computer or whatever you're using is. If you are coming in person to the parish house, please come a little bit earlier than 630 to set out your dish to pass. And that way we can begin promptly at 630. Thanks for that. Now, I want to remind you about something very special and near and dear to my heart because I love music almost as much as I love God. And that is what's happening next Sunday. The Bach B minor mass. Have you noticed that you've been getting little appetizers of it during the services? So if your appetite isn't stimulated, come and get the whole dish. There's a flyer in the program. Um, I don't know if there's any other critical announcements. Yes. I just wanted to say that um, in the parish house at coffee hour, there's a table in the back that has supplies to make an advent wreath. So if you'd like to sit around and um, make an advent wreath while you talk and socialize, the stuff is all there. Yes, good morning. My name is Ted Davis. I'm the director of music here and, and following on what Pan just said about the, uh, the B minor mass concert next Sunday. Um, these people behind me are very modest and, and, and the friends that are joining them for the concert next week have been doing incredible work since September on this epic, epic music. Um, and one of the ways we're able to do this is because of friends who help support it. 
there's some considerable costs involved. And one of the things in that form in the bulletin that offers you the opportunity to make a gift in honor of someone uh, to this effort. And that will appear in the concert program. And we're, we've, we've grown accustomed to these events, uh, developing some wonderful lists of tributes, marvelous tributes uh, that, that finish out that concert program. So if you're meaning to do that, or you know someone who's meaning to do that, we need that by tomorrow in order for, to meet publication deadlines. So that's why we've been uh, pushing this idea for a few weeks now, but now the time is nigh. Notice the theme? The time is nigh for gifts if they're going to appear in the program. And I know you don't care about you as donor appearing in the program, but maybe your honoree you would like to appear in the program. Um, we need those by tomorrow. And uh, yes, bring a friend next week. It's going to be glorious. Thanks. Thank you. All right, before we get ready for, yes. I, I was getting to that. No, it was just the things that were immediate that I was trying to. I have two additional things, but they're a little bit further out in the future, but they require that I know about them. One of them is an opportunity to take the Becoming Beloved Community workshop that the diocese sponsors which is required for all church leadership in the diocese, lay leadership and clergy leadership. Um, I actually am the facilitator of this workshop together with the new Canon for Mission, Randy Callender and the Reverend David Waycaster from uh, DC and uh, possibly the Archdeacon Ruth Elder. We're not sure about that yet. It's going to be at Claggett on the 13th of January and so that registration link is already open on the diocesan website. Uh, we can only accommodate 40 people. And so if you plan to take this training, uh, do sign up. And, and if you have any questions about it, contact me. The second event that's happening in January that I wanted to call to your attention is the women's retreat. We have had 16 responses to the office and one response to me, that 17. Uh, what I have heard from Flo is that the, attention, the attendance is usually larger than that. And the reason I need to know is because Tuesday morning, I'm calling Claggett to reserve how many rooms we need. I want to make sure that I reserve enough rooms this is not sleep in the bunkhouse. These are nice rooms in the Christian Inn with private bath. So if you are coming or you think you might be coming, please, please tell me or Adam sometime before Tuesday morning when I'm gonna contact Kim Wyans at Claggett and tell her how many rooms we're gonna need, okay? All right, now I'm going to invite you to walk in love as Christ first loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Bartholomew and all your saints we may ever the, enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body because we all share in one bread. Alleluia. For those at home who are sharing in our agape meal, let us offer this prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, you bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Grant that we who share this food and drink may receive the sustaining love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thank you. 
The Prayer of Thanksgiving on page 11. In union, O God, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, wherever that may be, we offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. No matter how we have received you today in our meal of communion, whether by sacrament or otherwise, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us in your grace, Holy Spirit, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us now and always, wherever we are. Amen. second coming in power and great glory we await. Make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. And the blessing of God Almighty, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer be with you this day and forever. Amen. Amen.
As we go forth into the world refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our vision and mission as a congregation. We will, with God's help, be a vibrant faith community that is a blazing beacon of God's transforming love in the world. God is calling us to take righteous risks. We accept this call and will respond by seeking and serving Christ in all people. Let, let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Yeah.